All right, listen up, for I be about to tell you a tale that'll send shivers down your spine. A story about a pirate so daring and handsome that you'll be telling your crew about it on your next voyage for certain. Tis one of Captain Sobey's tall tales, the story of the Shroud Breaker. It all started one salty day after I successfully fought off a nasty kraken. It grabbed me with one of its slimy tentacles, but I cut me way out using nothing but a toothpick, landing safely back on me ship. If anyone tells you otherwise, they be a scurvy cur. Anyways, I went back to me favorite tavern for a swig of rum when a mysterious stranger approached me. He told me about a hidden land filled with riches and adventure. Like any good pirate. It, I didn't believe a word he said. Before I left, he handed me a journal and said that it would prove that he was telling the truth. Well, joke's on him, for I don't know how to read and I find the written word offensive to me intellect. However, me first mate took a gander and told me twas written by a so-called pirate lord. Let's give him a name, shall we? How about Captain Benji? Well, me first mate told me that this journal spoke of wondrous legends, a shore of pure gold, on an island filled with riches beyond your wildest dreams. But you won't find it on any map, for it was swallowed by the mists of the Devil's Shroud. How convenient, an island that don't exist. It sounded like a wild pig chase to me. The journal went on and said that Captain Benji came across a weathered old chest and ensoyed a strange totem. Well, this crew must have drunk too much seawater, for they thought this totem twas the key to find in a treasure they called the Shroud Breaker. That thunder be just a coincidence, it's been raining all day. Anyways, crazy Captain Benji thought that this Shroud Breaker <sighs> could part the fog in the northwest and reveal the shores of gold. But what's a pirate tale without some excitement? One of the deadliest ships ever to plague these seas came for Captain Benji and his crew, the Burning Blade. A ship commanded by a man so evil that hell itself spat him back out. The one and only Captain Flameheart. Brandishing infernal cannons, I heard that his ship could light even the heartiest of holes ablaze in seconds. Captain Benji was no match for her fiery power, so he decided to cast the chest to the bottom of the sea in the hopes of surviving and coming back for it. But the fires were upon them. They made their last stand by an uncharted island between Crooked Masts and Old Crook's Hollow. With another deadly barrage of blazing cannonballs, the magpie's wing and its crew sunk to Davy Jones' locker, never to be seen again, proving that calling yourself a pirate lord don't make you very special now. Not that I believe this hogwash, but I reckon the sunken ship's log might tell us where they tossed that chest, in case they left any treasure. I don't know about you, but I still be working on improving me reputation with the gold hoarders, so I'd never turn down an extra chest. With that, me first mate and I set our sails for the last location mentioned in the journal. Using me good eye, I saw the uncharted island that was drawn in the journal. I thought to myself that this didn't prove a thing, but that's when I gazed upon the sunken remains of the magpie's wing. Could this really be Captain Benji's ship? While searching the captain's quarters, we found the ship's log. No, not that book. Aye, that be the one. Luck was on our side, for the pages were sealed away and protected from the harsh waters. The ship's log told of Captain Benji's final hours, or at least that's what me first mate told me. Remember, I don't do the reading. With the burning blade on their tracks, they fled to the northeast, passing some shallow isles to starboard. For you landlubbers, that means to the right. They changed their head in to northeast, rounding an oil and fortress, and then cutting sharply to the west. Minutes later, they tossed the chest overboard while passing a nearby island. This was their last log, and I had already seen their cruel fate. Using these new clues and me trusty map, I deciphered that they started by Thieves' Haven, 
Tis really more of a meeting place for thieves and tis a haven. Not that I would know. Anyways, they fled past Mutineer Rock, rounding the Crow's Nest Fortress, and tossed the chest overboard by Cutlass K, our next destination. While on our way, I noticed that my first mate had smeared lemons on the backs of the pages to see if any hidden text appeared. And by my beard, you'll never believe that suddenly, nothing happened of course. I told him that if he wasted me lemons again, he could swim back to port. But that did kill some time, and before we knew it, we arrived at Cutlass K. I smelled treasure in the air, so I jumped off me ship and started swimming towards the first shiny thing that caught me good eye. Little did I know, twas the chest that would change me life forever. And can you guess what was inside this chest? Rupees? Gold? The Shroud Breaker, perhaps? Wrong! It'd just be more dirty pages. Well, it'd also add this strange totem that Captain Benji spoke of, but I'm still tired of seeing more pages and silly words. But this time, even I could see that the pages were littered with signs of the Shroud Breaker. That's getting old. So I reckon that maybe this totem really was some kind of key. Why else would Captain Benji go to such efforts to hide it? Using me superior pirate intellect, I noticed that the scribbles on the left looked like islands, and the one in the center, that's where we needed to sail. With me vast knowledge of every nook and cranny of these seas, finding this island would be easier than getting drunk off a single mug of grog. Don't act like you don't know what I be saying. But alas, the night be dark and full of errors, for I had some trouble finding this island. Now me first mate'll tell you that he sailed us to the island on his own, but he's a horn swaggler and he ain't the one telling a story now, is he? So the way I remember it, with me expert sailing skills, I navigated us using only the night stars and me pirate intuition, and that's how I single-handedly found the island. Moving on, if the totem was a key, then we were looking for a keyhole, which a card into the journal would be a certain special fancy rock that a totem had to be put on top of. So we scoured the island searching the beaches, the caves, the cliffs, and whatever this thing was. But since there was nothing to find, I thought that mysterious stranger was running a rig on me after all. That's pirate speak for thinking he was playing a joke on me. Kinda ruins the impact if I have to explain it though. Anyways, just as me first mate began speaking a mutiny, we turned back to the journal and saw another clue. The cave scarab hides near the island's tears. Well, I've never cried, so I don't know what tears look like, but I'm told they look watery, which made me think of the nearby waterfall, and that's when we saw it. But like me ma always told me, eat a healthy snack before you pillage. So I ate whatever was moving around in me pocket, like a true pirate. When I placed that totem on the rock, I felt the earth tremble around me, and a secret entrance opened before us. I was so excited that I couldn't keep me snack down, and I vomited all over me first mate, uh, like a true pirate. The path led to a room that had some sort of carved stone table, and this handprint looked quite suspicious. But solving the mystery of this room, twasn't as easy as counting the mizzens on a Spanish galleon, I'll tell you that. Arr, that'd be a good pirate joke, because each ship only has one mizzen, which is the third mast from the bow, so it is actually quite easy to count- never mind. After we shed some light on the situation, har, you see what I did there, then it became clear. We lit the braziers only to realize that the door had shut behind us, trapping us in, and water started pouring from the ceiling. I reckon we had but a few minutes before we ran out of air. Using Captain Benji's journal, we matched the symbols on the pages to those carved in the stone pillars. Without panicking nor fumbling with the pillars in any way, I started to enter in the combinations. That's when the water filled up to me knees and then to me waist. Me first mate, bless his heart, tried bucketing the water out, but I calmly told him that there be nowhere to throw the water but back into the same room, ye dingus. Arr. But he did press the handprint when we were ready to lock in the final combination, and it worked. 
The door opened, the water poured out, and we sighed in awe of relief. We noticed right away that the stone table collected some water on top and reflected an image, perhaps the location of the Shroud Breaker. So it's time to do what pirates and ginger bearded dwarves do best, dig a hole. We dug up the spot and found a medallion. After inserting the medallion into the table, it presented us with another picture. So it was just like that kids game, you know, with the round and square pegs. That'd be a surprisingly useful game for a pirate to learn, for it comes in handy when your ship has a few holes in it. But back to the story, with the final medallion in hand, we were done. Well, I'll be jollier than a Roger. I couldn't believe me I. Let's pause here for a minute. Before you listen to this next part, I want you to know that I use me civilized and polite word to kindly tell me first mate to please keep his hands off his captain's loot. Arr, step back, you scurvy With extreme care, I lifted the shroud breaker from its stony tomb, while me first mate put a piece of raw chicken down in its place. Y you know, in case it was some kind of counterbalanced booby trap. I'm always glad that me first mate carries around so much chicken. Twas at this moment that a sinister chill went down our spines, and for some reason we felt like a grand adventure had only just begun. And just then, an army of skeletons rose from the ground and we ran for our lives, and in a flash, we were back at sea. We sailed to the closest outpost only to see two ships at port. They might just be merchants, but we weren't taking any chances, not with this fine booty on board. We changed our course and after restocking on some supplies and successfully maneuvering around a few rocks, we made it to Ancient Spire Outpost and found the mysterious stranger. He thanked me and called me the finest pirate he had ever heard of, but unfortunately, something's wrong. There should be four jewels set in the base that grant the Shroudbreaker its power, but they've been removed. Without them, you won't last five minutes in that fog. I asked me first mate if he stole the jewels, since you know, we're pirates, you can never be too sure, and I had him empty out his pockets just in case. But all I saw was a strange mixture of moldy bananas and leeches, and no, I didn't ask and I didn't want to know. We decided that we'd need a bigger boat if we were to find the jewels and sail to the shores of gold. So we set out to find a third member for our crew and some our chicken for our journey had only just begun. But alas, me hearties, that's where this part of the story ends. The story of the Shroudbreaker.